All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Reactive. So there's many, many frameworks and libraries out there when it comes to JavaScript. You have full front-end frameworks like Angular, back-end frameworks like Express on Node.js, and then you have smaller UI libraries like React.js and Reactive.js. Um, so there's so many out there that it can get a little frustrating when you're trying to decide which JS technology to use for which part of your application. Uh, I'm going to go into the different technologies in a little bit, but first we're going to dive in and see what Reactive is all about. All right, so what it is, it's a template-driven UI and DOM manipulation library. Okay, DOM meaning the document object model. And it basically transforms templates into blueprints for interactive applications. So we break our UI up into templates, which combine standard HTML with dynamic mustache elements. And if you've used mustache templating before, then the syntax will come very easy, which is pretty easy to begin with. Uh, Reactive was originally created for the website theguardian.com for building interactive news applications. Uh, a short time after that, it was released to the public. Uh, Reactive aims to keep things very simple and lightweight, but at the same time allowing us to build really powerful user interfaces. Reactive uses reactive programming, and this can mean a lot of different things, but generally it's a, it's a programming paradigm that is oriented around data flows and the propagation of data. Okay, that's kind of the book definition. A uh, much more simple way of looking at it is that if you do something in the program, you're going to get a reaction. Okay, if something's updated, it, it's going to um, it's going to have a reaction somewhere else. All right, so let's take a look at a very simple example. Uh, so we have A equals B plus C, and in imperative programming. This would mean that A is assigned by the result of B plus C. And later the values of B and C can change with no effect on A. Okay, but in reactive programming, the value of A would automatically be updated based on the new values of B and C. Okay, another example would be a spreadsheet. You can have static values in a cell uh, that don't change at all, or you can have formulas that are evaluated based on values of other cells. Okay, that works similar to reactive programming. All right, so all web apps use HTML in some way. HTML is fantastic for displaying static content. That's what it's for. It's a markup language. Okay, it's not a programming language. So it displays content, but doesn't do too much that is interactive or dynamic. And this is where technology like Reactive comes in. Okay, we can use variables, conditionals, and loops right in our HTML by using templates. Reactive takes our mustache-based templates and turns them into a lightweight representation of the DOM. Okay, and this is known as the virtual DOM. And if, you've, if you have experience in React.js, it's very similar in that aspect. Okay, so the virtual DOM, it, it's a mini representation of the DOM, and we can update certain parts of it without having to go and reload the entire page. All right, we'll talk more about that as we go on. All right, so Mustache. Mustache is a templating engine, and it is pretty lightweight. Uh, it has a very user-friendly syntax, which uses double curly braces. So you can see right here, as an example, we would have a variable, and it's wrapped in double curly braces, which, if you look at them, they kind of look like mustaches. So I'm guessing that's where the name came from. All right, and there's much more we can do with mustache than just create simple variables. We can break our templates up into sections and partials, okay, so we can combine templates. Um, we can leave comments. There's a commenting system. Uh, we can create custom delimiters. We can loop through both arrays and objects. We can use conditionals like if, if else, and unless. We can write expressions, create aliases, uh, escape characters, and we'll be learning about all this stuff as we move along and progress. All right, so let's take a look at some of the advanced features of Reactive. All right, so uh, reactive templating, which is just that. It's a template that will respond or react to different events and without having to reload the page. Okay, we also have two-way data binding, 
uh, and this is where React uh, Reactive really shines. If you've ever used Angular JS, which is a, a much larger JS framework, two-way data binding is very similar in Reactive. Okay, we can bind, let's say, a text input to another element on the page, and they'll kind of echo each other. All right, and I'll give you an example in a little bit. Two-way data binding can also be disabled pretty easily. Okay, we can do things like animations and transitions. Transitions allow us to control elements, uh, how they're first rendered in the DOM, and then how they're removed. So we can have uh, effects like fading, sliding, uh, and some other ones as well. SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics, are also supported. Uh, we can do some cool things using different shapes with the SVG tag. Data-driven graphics like charts and graphs are possible. Um, Reactive also has its own event system, so we can create, let's say, a click or a tap function on a button and then have uh, another element in the DOM respond without having to re-render the page. Okay, components are also used, much like React.js. If you've ever used React, components work uh, pretty similar. Components are used to encapsulate behavior, and it makes things easier to understand overall, whether it's yourself or other developers that may be working on the project. We also have observers, which give us a publish and subscribe mechanism for reactive data. Key paths, which are the main way to interact with a re uh, reactive instance. It's essentially a, a string that represents the location of a piece of data. All right, so don't worry if, if all of this is gibberish to you. Uh, we'll be going over this stuff pretty slowly. Uh, I think giving you examples uh, where you can see the actual code is going to be much better than me trying to explain it. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what's to come. All right, so as I said, uh, there's a lot of different frameworks and libraries out there. React.js is probably the, the closest to Reactive. Um, so let's take a look at some of the similarities and differences. So both React and Reactive, they both use a virtual DOM to an extent. Okay, a virtual DOM being a smaller, more compact version of the actual document object model. Certain parts can be updated and the whole page doesn't have to be reloaded. Um, both libraries realize that this makes things happen much faster than uh, a traditional page reload. Another similarity is how they both take advantage of reactive programming. Okay, when the state of the application changes, your view also changes. It reacts to that state. Uh, with traditional libraries, you usually have to implement um, all of your render logic manually and then write it up with a bunch of publish and subscribe events. With React and Reactive, uh, you don't have to do that. Okay, both React and Reactive also believe in keeping things simple in both syntax and within operations. Okay, now with that said, there's also uh, a bunch of differences in the two. One is templating. React doesn't use templating in the way that Reactive does. Uh, instead, you describe your view with calling a function. Okay, an advantage to that is that um, your code is analyzed and is subject to the same rules as the rest of your app. Um, using templates like Reactive does is generally easier. Uh, it keeps things more separated and you can have, for instance, a designer that might not understand JavaScript very well. They can still go in and read and modify the static HTML in the template. Okay, change tracking is also different. React re-renders the entire app when the state is changed. Uh, it uses what's called a diff algorithm kind of looks at um, looks at the original content and then what's changed and updates accordingly. Reactive implements a more conservative change tracking mechanism so that only a subset of that virtual DOM is notified by any change. Okay, and then we have two-way data binding. Uh, React.js doesn't embrace this like Reactive does. In React, things generally flow in a one-way direction from parent to child and two-way data binding is looked at uh, as a possible problem because there's no single source of truth, or SSOT. Um, Reactive tends to resemble Angular when it comes to two-way data binding. All right, so that's how the two uh, are similar and also different. So getting started, there's no required external dependencies. Um, we don't have any kind of complicated installations or anything like that. It's really easy. All we need to do 
is basically include the file, the script. Okay, and you can see this is the CDN link right here. And of course, you can download it and include it in your project directly if you want. Okay, you can also use Node.js and NPM. You can install using NPM install Reactive. Uh, we'll get into that later on after we look at the, the core fundamentals and syntax. All right, so that's a quick summary of what Reactive is and how it works. And as we move along, we'll be talking about these, these aspects more thoroughly. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.